Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Ari Views back with another video and today I will show you guys some really cool iPhone hidden features that are actual game changers. Features you probably didn't know about but that are very very useful and you will probably find yourself using these most of the time on daily basis while using your device or running on iOS 16. Some of these hidden features will be older, most of them will be newer. And one of them that is actually older but I know a lot of iPhone users don't know about is the ability to open a link on Safari in the background without having to switch from your current tab. So if I have a link here I want to open, I want to open it on a tab in the background. You can see right here if I go to my tabs I have only this one. All I have to do now is tap on that link with two fingers just like that and I have that open now in another tab in the background and I'm still here without having to leave this tab. So when I go here you can see there is the other tab. Now for this to work you will have to have this enabled so head on to settings, go under safari and then you will find right here open new links here just choose in background and you're good to go. Now when it comes to Safari, websites and other apps as well, we need to scroll. The easiest way to scroll faster and easier find anything you need is by using the scroll bar right here. Now, you don't want to swipe all the time like this. All you have to do, you see that bar right there, just tap and hold on that bar. So let me just do that again. So you will have basically the bar right there, tap and hold it and then you can drag it up or down like this of course. You can do it faster or slower however you want that and you can move through a website or any other app where you can scroll. Now here we have another one in Safari. If you use Safari like this with basically the address bar being at the bottom which is the new basically look on iOS 16 but then Apple also allowed us to put it on the top with the old style. What you can do here is actually swipe like this to switch between tabs in Safari. So when you want to go to the other tab you no longer need to actually go to the tabs view you just swipe like this and when you're on your last tab you will have another feature here that actually allows you to open a new tab pretty quickly simply swipe like this and they can go here and open any other tab you want. Now when you're on your lock screen and maybe you're on an environment where it's like dark or you just cannot use your face ID like right here when I'm standing now and I have my iPhone recording here I cannot use my face ID but I can bypass that pretty quickly I don't have to wait for the iPhone to actually show me the passcode option so what I can do here is just swipe up tap on face ID there and it will take me right into the passcode screen now I can enter the passcode and just bypass face ID as easy is that. And when talking about Face ID you know that you can add your Face ID on your phone but you cannot add others like you can do with Touch ID like you can have multiple fingers on a Touch ID device. But you have this right here, set up alternate appearance. Now this is basically for if you have a beard and you sometimes you shave it or basically use different accessories and sometimes not so that way you will have your iPhone recognize you faster. But you can also use this to actually set up a second face ID maybe for a second person and try to use of course a phone with two different face IDs. If you're on iMessage and you want to send a TikTok video to someone, the easiest way to actually do that is by tapping here into the apps and you will have the TikTok logo here. So you tap on the TikTok logo and here you will find your profile, your followings and also the videos that you have liked. If I want to send one of the videos that I have liked, all I have to do is select it from there, tap on send and I'm good to go. I can also swipe up here to view more videos and of course scroll to view even older videos that I have liked on TikTok. Now this right here is probably one of the best features of the music app on iOS. So if I go to search and I go here I can choose Apple Music and I can search a song even though I might not know the artist or the title of the song. All I have to know is to just remember a few words from the lyrics so I'll just go ahead and search for that. So there we go, we have there a song by Tupac and we can find it very very easily simply by using a few words from the lyrics of that song. On iOS whenever you're typing something or doing anything else you can actually use the shake to undo feature so just like that undo but you can also shake once again and then you can actually redo what you have just undone so if you by mistake delete something you can redo it simply by shaking your phone again. 
As you might know, on iOS 16, you can actually copy and paste edits on the Photos app. But did you know that you can do that from photos to videos or from videos to photos? So here I have a photo that I have edited. I can go ahead and copy the edits here and I can just go ahead and go to this video. If I wanna actually just paste those edits, I can do that just like that. And as you can see, you can actually paste edits from a photo, an image to a video or from a video to an image. Now, probably one of the most underrated feature of iOS is the shortcuts app. You can use that for a lot of things. So sometimes we might need to quickly record a video. So let's say you want to do that. You will have to find the camera app and then tap on recording and then it will start recording the video. If you want that to happen real quickly, you can do that with a shortcut and it's very, very easy. So all we have to do here is go to create a new shortcut and just search here on add action, record a video. So right there is actually take video. So you choose that. And once you're done with this, you can choose the back or the front camera and tap the dumb button. Now, all you have to do is actually run that shortcut and it's starting here to record a video. It's already recording. You don't need to tap the record video button. And what's even better is that you can actually combine this with back tap and that will be way, way better. So let's just try it out. Head on to settings and go here under accessibility. And now if I go to touch and I go to back tap here, all I have to do is go to double tap or triple tap. And from the shortcuts here, I can choose take video. And now I can use my iPhone to take a video simply by double tapping on the back of the phone. Just double tap and your iPhone will straight away start actually recording a video. It's kind of hard doing this, of course, while holding the phone here, but you can see it's now actually recording a video. So back tap is actually a pretty useful feature that I think a lot of people are forgetting of. And one of the coolest thing you can do with back tap is having quick access to your camera. Just like that, that you can start recording a video right away with shortcuts. You can actually open the camera using back tap. So go to settings right here under touch again, under back tap, you can choose camera. So whenever you need to quickly take a photo or a video, you don't want to search for the camera app. All you have to do is just double tap on the back or triple tap on the back of your phone and it takes you right into your camera app. Whenever using your iPhone and you have a bunch of notifications, maybe an app is sending you a lot of notifications or maybe a group chat or something like that and you're getting a lot of notifications and maybe they're interrupting with your work or something like that, you can actually mute those but just for a certain part of time. So go to the notification center. So if I have notifications here, all I have to do is just swipe like this and tap on options. And right now I will have the option to actually mute these for an hour or for today. So if I just don't want to be disturbed by these notifications, I can mute completely the whole notifications from, from that app for an hour or the whole day. A big improvement on iOS 16 was the dictation. Apple has done a great job with dictation on iOS 16. And one of the coolest things is that you can start typing something on your keyboard and then dictate and then continue typing. It works really well. And one really cool thing is that it actually recognizes emojis. So if I say the name of an emoji, it won't actually type the text, but the emoji. So you can just tap here and just say the name of an emoji, fire emoji. And just like that, instead of just like, typing the text, it will actually show me the emoji. One of the things that iPhone users do a lot is of course take screenshots. Nowadays you will take screenshots for basically everything. It's pretty convenient, of course, very easy to do, but you will have a bunch of screenshots there just named after the hour and the minute it was taken. When you take a screenshot, what you have to do is actually tap right there on the share button and then it will give you the option to rename it. So tap on rename and you can add a new name for that screenshot. Whenever you're recording the screen of your iPhone, maybe you want to screen record something to tell someone to basically something or just guide them into doing a certain thing on their phone. You want to do a voiceover. What you can, what you can do is actually head onto your control center and here just tap and hold the recording button and make sure you tap on the microphone and it turns red. It's on. Now you can actually do a screen record and at the same time a voiceover. 
Whenever you're sending a photo to someone or just sharing it maybe, you want to hide maybe parts that you don't want people to see. What most people will do is actually do this. Just use the markup tools here to basically just cover that. So let's just choose another color that will look better. So just like this. And as you know, on iOS by using the edit tools, sim the simple edit tools on the Photos app, you can actually remove this and just see what's beneath that basically when you're doing it like this. Now the easier and the best way to do that is by using this plus button right there. So let's just say here, I wanna hide that part where it says hello, tab the plus button, choose here the square, just do it like this, and then tap on this button and use that and we're good to go. That's the right way to actually hide or remove something from an image. Now, if you're like me and you don't want to have a lot of apps on your home screen, you have maybe just one or two pages and only the apps that you actually use on a daily basis. What you want to do is have the apps that you install, the new apps, move right into the app library. So the way to do that, head on to your settings and then go to home screen. And then right here, we'll have add to home screen or app library. You choose app library and the apps won't appear on the home screen at all. They will just move straight to the app library. And last but not least, when it comes to selecting text on iOS, anywhere on iOS, you can select the last word of a paragraph of a paragraph or a sentence. If you have the cursor there, all you have to do is just double tap anywhere on the screen. As you can see, it will select that word. Or the other thing you can do is triple tap and it will select the whole sentence or the whole paragraph. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and all the cool hidden features of iOS. That's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to leave a like, and I will see you on the next one.